Hey, Riddle here. It's morning and it's time to take care of animals. So when you have animals, you know, people talk about how difficult it is, but it's not difficult. You just have to have some self-awareness and realize that they're living things and to do something right is usually never easy. And when you choose to be responsible for the life of another living thing, they take priority. Which means no matter how crappy you feel or what you want to do, you have to take care of your animals first. And the number one thing about caring for animals is cleanliness. So right now it's all about chicks. This year I decided to hatch my own eggs, so I got a really inexpensive incubator on um, Amazon. I can't really, I can't recommend this incubator. It's about 40 bucks. Now, the thing is that people may not know is that incubators have to be kept a certain temperature, which is 100 degrees, which this does really well, and they have to be kept at a certain humidity which this does really well, kind of, sort of. Um, there's a bottle that attaches to this, and the bottle allows water to fill in the bottom of this. But it's kind of, mm, kind of overfills, it underfills. I've never really gotten it down pat, it spills. It's really precarious. The second thing is, they claim that this incubator can hold up to 24 eggs when in actuality uh it can hold about six and what i mean hold yeah you could stuff about 16 eggs in here which is what i did i stuffed as many eggs in there as i could but then what i realized is that eggs have to be turned often because that's what the mother hen does gently they have to be turned so this thing, the red thing, is supposed to gently turn the eggs. The problem is if you put even a dozen eggs in this thing, the turning mechanism isn't strong enough to actually turn the eggs, which meant Mr. Riddle had to hand turn eggs every hour, every other hour for 21 days. <laughs> so this is what I'm talking about. I make things look easy. People like me make things look easy because we don't, you know, you don't see the details. You don't see the the commitment to life. And that's in the garden and that's on the homestead here too. But it was successful. As you can see, I was a good mother hen. And uh, the only reason these eggs have not hatched yet is I put these ones, these eggs in later. And one of these eggs is an experiment because I know from the size, particularly of this one, that it has a double yolk. And the one thing I've never seen is, do double yolk eggs make twin chickens? So I'm really curious to see if it's going to make twin chickens or not. But I think I put those in. I put it on my calendar, but I don't know if you... I have an Apple phone, Apple calendar. That damn thing never works. I put my stuff in there, I hit save, and then it just disappears. And I put it in there, and I think it goes to another universe. I don't know. Anyway, I think I put it in there four or five days after these eggs had been placed in here. So this incubator works well for temperature. It works okay for humidity, but it does not turn the eggs really well. Let me show you this. And it's about 40 bucks. So when you turn it on and off, do you hear that? It's supposed to be turning the eggs right now. Oh, there we go. That's what it's supposed to do. But you can see how it's very weak, really, really weak. Okay, so this is my home brooder. Last year, after I bought and brought my chicks home versus this year, I used my own eggs and the neighbor gave me eggs. Uh, you know, they grow so fast and they need a lot of room because if you don't give chickens a lot of room, even when they're babies, they can get really aggressive with themselves and you're going to run into more possible issues with disease. Uh, so, and I have some, some interesting things I do instinctively 
to start getting their immune system stronger. One, I buy this stuff that goes in their water that gives them the electrolytes and probiotics, which I think helps to strengthen their immune systems faster. Being that I cannot regurgitate food for them, or I won't regurgitate food for them <laughs> to make their, you know, help to give them those, um, that, that bacteria that they need to strengthen them. Uh, quite early on, I start to give them vegetation from the garden. And in about four or five days, I will start giving them compost worms and insects from the garden to eat. And that soil and those uh, these plants and things are going to help start bringing in some of the bacteria and, and pathogens from outside and introducing it to them. So when they finally get outside, it's not going to be like this new thing and shock their system. I did this last year and I didn't lose any chicks. I was really successful. I used, because they grow so fast, I used the upstairs shower because we have a small family and we don't use this shower as my brooding pen. So if you have an extra shower, the great thing about it is, is that it's really easy to keep clean, easy to disinfect. I use white vinegar so there's no uh, chemicals involved. And uh, they've proven that white vinegar, you can buy it anywhere, Costco, Walmart, has the same antibacterial properties as bleach does. You just make sure you got to get it, you know, get it on and get it all the way off because it will create a fume and, you know, fumes aren't good even if they're natural fumes. So I disinfect with the white vinegar and then I layered my brooder with... I lay off. Oh, I took it downstairs already. I layer. Oh, here it is. I layered my brooder with these drawer liner, and one of these will easily fill a shower. And the reason I chose this plastic drawer liner is it can be used over and over again. It's really thick, and it's cleanable, and it has a texture on it. See the texture, and why the texture is important is you don't want to put baby fowl on a slippery surface because their legs can get splayed. They can literally hurt themselves. And so this gives them a little bit of texture. And then on top of that, I use paper towel and toilet paper, which makes it absorbent. And they can poop and pee everywhere, and it will absorb the mess. And then every day, which is what I'm doing this morning, I will come in and just pull all of this up and throw it away or compost it and put fresh down for them. And this way, this is going to be kept as clean as possible. It'll smell nice and uh, it'll be the best case scenario for them in regards to health and safety. You can tell me, see we have our water and our little chiclet food in there. Uh, another nice thing about doing this in the bathroom is we have ventilation. So when they get better and they're bigger and they're really pooping, then I'll be able to turn the, the ventilation on to give them some fresh air in here to help regulate the temperature and to, uh, it'll smell better. And then when, in about seven weeks, when they're big enough to go outside, I just disinfect the whole bathroom with bleach and nobody ever know, knew that I was using it as a brooder. Uh, there is a point that gets so big that this will not be large enough for them to be happy in. And that's when I literally open the door and I just line the entire bathroom with uh, plastic and paper and just let them free range in here. And it's usually only for about a week or two. And then I clean that up every day. But then they go outside and that's that. The reason I'm excited about these chicks is not only will these chicks, I have some new ones. The neighbor gave me some olive eggers and a uh, copper maran, I think she called it. So she has all these exotic, she had all these exotic egg layers and mixes of them. But last year I realized when I was standing in line to get chicks because they actually run out of chicks here. Um, that I was the only person in line. So. America anymore, the new America. People don't talk to each other. And if you try to talk to each other and be friendly, you're the weirdo. 
Well, let me tell you, if you're going out in the world, you're putting yourself in a social situation and you should be prepared and open to socializing. That's why we're called a society. So you're the weirdos for not being friendly and talking to each other, idiots. So I'm standing in line with a bunch of strangers waiting to get the chickens. It's really chicks. It's really competitive because everyone wants to get the really special ones. And I start to make forced conversation on strangers. And that's when I realized really quick that I was the only one in line who actually researched each chicken to see how many eggs does it lay? Is it a meat chicken or just an egg chicken? What's its temperament? These are things that um, were important to me because if you're mixing chickens together, you want to have a really hospitable hen house. And so I chose less aggressive chickens. I chose the top egg producers and I chose big meat chickens, the black ocelotropes, ocelopes. I always have trouble remembering that. They're from Australia, they're black. So these chicks are, uh, my chicks are a hybrid of the most prolific egg layers, which were the like California whites, I think I chose for that and the black ocelotropes, ocelopes. And so it's gonna be really interesting to see if I get these bigger birds, nice big meat chickens that are super prolific egg layers. That's my hybrid. And I have some other chickens too. The, the, the black, my, I, I got two roosters. I ate one of them because he was just a bastard. And then I kept, I really wanted this other rooster who was supposed to be a hen, which is the black Australian chicken. He's huge, he's beautiful. And so he sired a lot of these. And that's why I know that those big, the big, um, the egg laying and meat chickens will be infused into most of my chicks. That's gonna be my special hybrid here on the homestead. Okay, I'm going to get to work because these babies are in filth right now and uh, it's the first thing in the morning. And then after I get this cleaned up, I can go on to my next, next task of the day. But remember, you know, you get chicks, you get a puppy, you get a kitten, you get a bird, you get a, a goat. It's a full-time thing. It's a full-time thing. So uh, it's not like this, oh, me, me, lovely, lovely, take, take, take. It's a life. It's a life and they come first and you have to keep their, uh, you know, regardless if you're going to eat them or not. But especially if you're going to consume them, they're going to give that to you. You have to keep them healthy. You have to keep them well fed and you have to keep their environment really, really clean. And if you keep their environment really, really clean, you're, you're going to have a much better chance of not having to deal with disease and um, you're gonna have really clean eggs. When I see people and they like pull their eggs out and they're all covered with, you know, bird poop, I'm like eh, horrified. In my boxes, there's you never get b bird poop on the eggs. My boxes are so clean, but I have a special way I do that, of course, because it's me. <laughs> okay, that's it. Uh, I hope you found some value in this. I'm probably gonna do just a cute video of just the chicks, or I'm just gonna set up the camera like in the in the brooder for people to watch the chicks because they're just so sweet. And uh, that's it. If you like my quick money saving tips, rants, raves, politics, art, and occasional magic, please subscribe, it helps. Take care of yourselves and take care of each other because I believe how we treat each other on the streets is our ultimate reality. And be forewarned, if you're just subscribing to my channel because you're comfortable with just my farming stuff, you're just my, you know, animal husbandry stuff or just my cooking stuff or just my... Every once in a while, I'm going to throw you a curveball because life is not like that. Life is not this monoculture, mon psychological monoculture. We live in a we live in very interesting times, and my YouTube channel is my YouTube channel. So occasionally, I'm going to have a political opinion, or I'm going to come at you with something that's going to challenge you. 
And it always disappoints me that people are so narrow-minded, so weak, that when they're challenged with something that they don't 100% agree with, I will lose subscribers. You know, one of the main times I lose subscribers is when I post art stuff. Like when I collect a piece of art or make a piece of art. Like, what's up with that? Are people that sick? So weird? Like, why? It's just art. Like, no one's stopping you from collecting art or collecting cars or collecting cans. It's my thing. So what's your problem? You know, what is that? Like, people are so soul sick. The weird, the weird stuff. The way that people deal with stuff anymore, the whole cancel culture is so, it's just so weak. It's really weak. And uh, it's toxic in a way that is going to have a really quantitative, long-term effect on our society. Because they're just little threads ripping away, ripping away, ripping away, and further separating us and people are choosing to separate themselves we can't blame the thems and the theys and the this is that you're choosing to do this through ignorance that's it so there bye